Hi everyone, it's Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper coming at you live tonight unexpectedly because, well, I don't know, I figured we're all home. We're all, our kids' activities have all been canceled. Um, I know for us, we don't have dance. And I'm going to refresh my page. We don't have dance. We do not have a Bible study. Just nothing. So I thought, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun stamping, seeing some new products. Um, the Ornate Garden Suite is coming up April 1st, and us demonstrators got to order it now. So, And I got mine in my mail actually last week, so I thought I would lay the products out and we could take, take a look at them because there's a lot of pretty stuff in there. So I don't know. It's only been a couple of days, and already I'm, I'm a homebody, and I already... And feeling pretty um, pretty cooped up so and I know my kids are doing online schooling today we went and got my daughter Emma at school sorry I'm refreshing my screen here because <laughs> I have no idea if anybody's gonna join me so hopefully oh my screen is like locking up here so okay let me open this up okay looks good um, so yeah my daughter, we had to go pick her up at school today, and she is so sad about leaving. And as happy as I am to have her come home, I feel kind of bad that she's actually not really wanting to be here because it makes me realize her life isn't here with us anymore. So, yeah, but I am happy to see her. My other two are doing online learning. Emma's going to be doing online learning. My husband even had to stay home from work. So, just shout outs. Just start talking, questions, comments, whatever you want. But I just thought... Let's just have some fun. I was feeling a little bit lonely, wanted to connect with some other stamping people. So, and I will be showing you the ornate garden suite. And I actually made a couple projects that use some of those products on them. So I'll be showing you those too. And I'm actually going to try and go live every day this week. So we'll see how that goes. But, um, so yeah, in the comments, let me know what you've been doing and what you're up to and how you're making the best of this situation too. I don't know. Maybe you still have to go to work. I don't know. So, okay. I am going to flip the camera down so that I can see, um, so that you can see my desk here. So, um, yeah, bear with me here. Flip it. Okay. See if I got this straight. Okay, that I think looks good. Yes, it does. So, okay, I have got a pile of product here for us to look at. So, what should we start with? What do you think? The Ornate Garden Suite. So, this is going to be something that um, right now it's available to demonstrators and it is going to be in the annual catalog for 2019 and 20. The 2020 2021 annual catalog but you know stampin up they wanted to give us something fun to look at and play with and the time between celebration ending at the end of this month and the new catalog coming out so they introduced the ornate garden suite to us and it is beautiful i actually went back and forth about should i buy the whole suite should i just get a couple of things and i sprung hi jane i sprung for the entire suite so let's start. So this is the Ornate Garden Ribbon Combo Pack. And the colors are, I think, Calypso Coral and Old Olive. So I can't see how much you get of this, but this ribbon is nice and thin and it's soft and it ties really easily. Hi, Lisa. Whoop. Yeah, it ties really easy if you don't have my fumble fingers here. I'm not my best in the evening. I'm a morning person. I get up at like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. Hi, Holly. I get up at like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, so this is not my time of night. The end of Jeopardy signals to me that my day is pretty much done. So there you go. Look at that. It ties so nice. I like these colors together, too, because they are, they are spring. And the rolls are pretty generous size, too. So that's part of it. Um, 
So that is the Ornate Garden Ribbon Combo Pack. I can't wait to play with this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like 15 different projects with all of this. And I'm going to bundle it all up in a tutorial. And so it'll be a lot of picture taking. Now this is an embossing folder. And if you are not familiar, it's a 3D embossing folder. This is the pattern. If you're not familiar with embossing, this is dry embossing. And you put your cardstock into the folder. So this is an extra thick embossing folder and you put your paper your piece of cardstock right into that folder just like this and you would close it and you would run it through your die cutting machine which might be a cuddle bug or a vagabond or a big shot anything like that and then when you take it out it dry embosses this pattern into the cardstock. This one is super pretty and you can do a lot of things with this. You can take an ink pad and um, you know what, let me grab a white one. I like to do this particular trick. You can take, for instance, like a white ink pad and you could lightly brush it over the paper and it would, the ink would pick up the raised portions of that cardstock and you get some pretty highlights in there. So you can see how it's highlighting the flowers, but the recessed parts are staying still this Rococo rose color. So there's lots of cool tricks you can do with it. And with these 3D embossing folders, if you take a Stampin' Spritzer that's filled with water like this, and you spray your cardstock with a couple spritzes the um, before you run it through your die cut machine, and you'll get a super, super deep impression with this paper. So that is the Ornate Floral 3D embossing folder that's coming April 1st. Okay, and I have a card I made with that. Then the next thing, let's see what there is. Oh, these Gilded Gems. Yeah, these are pretty. Look at that bling. I love it. And they come in three different sizes, and you can just Use your little piercing tool and just pop them up all over your card. Just really like, I don't know, pile them on. I'm always like more is more whenever I make cards. More is more. So, I don't know. but So, if your guys' kids are doing online learning, do they like it? Mine don't like it so much. It's only the first day though, but they feel kind of um, kafoozled. Is that a word? Yeah, confused by it. But all right, back to this. <laughs> the gilded gems. These are so pretty. They're sort of like gold, I would say. Yeah, gold. So that would look really nice with that old olive and calypso coral colors. That's part of the suite. Then we have this stamp set here, or neat style, which I want to get some white paper out because I want to try stamping these. I think these would be super fun to color. And I think using our Stampin' Blends alcohol markers would be pretty fun. So this is a red rubber set, which I actually prefer red rubber stamps. I think when you stamp them, it gives it a lot more detail. It picks it up more. So let's just try this particular flower right here. All right, and we're gonna use, anytime you're gonna color with our Stampin' Blends alcohol markers, you want to use the Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad because it will not smear. So, okay, so I'm gonna just stamp that flower right there like that. Ooh, that looks pretty. I really like this set. I can't wait to color with it. And then let's pick some colors. How about, um, what's this one? Lovely lipstick. Oh yeah, let's make a lovely lipstick flower. And then what other color could we use? One of these pinks here. Yeah, let's use Flirty Flamingo. Let's give it a try. So when you use these alcohol ink markers, I'm going to use the brush tip. But they actually have a bullet tip too. And either end will work just fine. But I liked when I color, I like to start with the lighter color of my Stampin' Blends. And I just use the brush tip to just do little quick flicks out like that. And I go almost to the end of this image. I don't wanna go all the way to the end of it because otherwise the ink will bleed out the sides of it and then it just doesn't look very pretty. So now I've done that light color and now I'm gonna go in with this darker, lovely lipstick color and add a little bit more there. 
Then I'm going to go back over again with the exact same color I used before, which is the light flirty flamingo. And just keep coloring over and over and over it until that harsh line just blends itself away. Coloring is so relaxing. My 89 year old grandmother loves to color. She uses gel pens and I bought her a coloring book for Christmas. But you know what I'm thinking? I could probably just stamp her a bunch of these images. She's in a rehab facility right now and I think she would like it. Now I wanna add a little bit more color and you can totally do that. That These alcohol ink markers make allow it so that you can go over and over and over again and you're not gonna ruin the marker tips. You're not gonna contaminate them. You are not going to ruin your paper. And you can just keep going. I'm going to use the brush tip on this one and just add a little bit more. And you just, just play with it. I really didn't know how to use these the first time I got them. But I've colored so many images. Just stamp a bunch of them and sit in front of the TV and just go to town on it. And you can get all kinds of different shades just from using these. Nope, I just wrote on my desk. Okay. And yeah, so that's how you do it. So for this one, I might use some um, green. So let's just pull out a couple. I'm just randomly pulling these out. I'm not even looking at them. So these ones happen to be dark granny apple green. And oh, look at that, light granny apple green. So it's the dark and the light shade of the same color. So I'm gonna use the light one first and just go over the leaf like that and down there. I'll leave that uncapped. And then I'm gonna take the dark one, dark granny apple green, and now I'm gonna go over it again with the light granny apple green and blend it out. So, I mean, this isn't a quick way of coloring, so if you're looking for super quick, probably not gonna be your thing, but in this case, I don't really care that it's taking a while because it's something relaxing that you can do, and it's, it's pretty mindless, so wrong cap on that. So yeah, that's a fun way to color the images from this ornate style um, stamp set. And this one, ooh, that one. I want to try a bunch of different colors on that. So oh, look at the cute little flower there. That would be so sweet to color it and cut it out and sprinkle it all over your card. Oh my gosh, that would be really cute. And then you could put one of these little gilded gems in the middle of it, the smaller ones. That would be a really pretty look. And then I was thinking too, with this flower, I could actually take my Wink Estella pen. This is a glitter brush pen. The glitter is already in the barrel of this pen and it has a brush tip and you can just brush it right over your flower. And it'll, I can hear my dog Lily whining at the door. She wants down here, but I won't let her. I don't want her with me right now. <laughs> Does that mean? <laughs> she hangs on me all day. Do you guys have pets like that? Oh my gosh, look at that sparkle. Okay, I'm gonna move this around. All right, I'm getting warmed up now. Look at that, can you see that sparkle? I love this stuff. Oh my gosh, I love this stuff. Okay, so that's a Wink Estella pen. You can add some glitter and shine to all of it. You could bling this out with those gold gems too. All right, let's go on to the next one. So that is ornate style. This is all, remember, part of the ornate garden suite coming April 1st. This is the next stamp set in that suite, ornate thanks. So seriously, can you ever run out of ways to say thank you? I don't think so. I know that's the card I send the most often, right behind um, birthday cards. But look at all the ways that you can say thank you here. And I like this cursive script. And these are clear photopolymer stamps. So they stick on your block just like the regular red rubber ones do. Let me get a block to show you here. So you can take these, you just peel them right off the backing sheet and you put them right on your block, just like that. And when you ink it up, you can see exactly where you are stamping. So you can get perfect placement. That's the advantage to these clear photopolymer stamps. Um, but the, all these sayings, thank you, so grateful, thanks, and you can build sentences. So 
This one says for everything. So you could either put so grateful for everything, thank you for everything, um, seriously, thanks, just wanted to say thanks. So I think it'd be kind of fun actually to use each one of these. Like just make one basic card and then make that same card multiple times and then just stamp all these sentiments out on little strips and you can just cut and glue them all to all those different cards and you'd have a great stack. So I don't know if you have your own business or I don't know, you can make a stack of thank you cards and you can send them out to your customers. I know that's what I do. I like to make a bunch of thank you cards at one time and I mail them out to my customers because they're awesome. And this set will be really good for that. So I was actually thinking of that when I got this, but I really like all the ways and I like the, the bigger font here because sometimes you want to fill up a lot of space on a card. And this, this would do that, this size right up here, because you can use those by themselves too. So that is Ornate Thanks. Then there are dies, of course, to go with those stamp sets. You know Stampin' Up! likes to bundle their stamp sets with dies, and then they you get a 10% discount when you buy them together. So this particular one's called the Ornate Layers Dies. Now what I like to do when I first get a die set is just run a piece of cardstock through it with all the different dies. That's actually not part of it. Um, with all the different dies. And then I keep them in the folder with my die set so that when I'm deciding on what elements to use on a card, I can just play with these and mix and match them. But they will come like this glued to this sheet. But look at all the detail of these dies. Look at all of that. That is just, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. And they all are sized to nest together. Now one trick for using really intricate dies like this is dryer sheets. Because you could sit there and you could poke all the little pieces of paper out, but no, you don't want to do that. So what you can do is you have your base plate that you run through your die cut machine. And then you can put a dryer sheet on top of it then put this die on the dryer sheet, then put your cardstock on top of this, run it through, and then all these little pieces will stick to the dryer sheet and you can just peel off the die itself. So if I were to have this on the dryer sheet and I peeled it off, all those little pieces would stick and this is the piece that would come off of it. So it's a really cute, a really good trick. You can go to the dollar store and get a box of dryer sheets for a dollar and there's 80 of them and you can use them more than once. So they will last you a super long time. But those are the dies, so I'm gonna show you them cut out. So we have this one here, and this die here, this is how this cuts this one out. So at first when you look at this, you think, oh, it's gonna cut that piece out, but it actually is cutting the pattern into your piece of cardstock. So I'm thinking, you know, let me get a piece of paper here. I'm thinking of, like, maybe you could um, overlay that on a piece of designer series paper. So let me just pull out a sheet here. Not that this really matches or anything, but you could just lay this over top of this like that so your pattern peeks through. Maybe like a little peekaboo window. Pretty, pretty nice. And then so we have those two. We have a long skinny stitched rectangle, which this, this stitching shape is really popular right now in card making. We've got this piece, which you could you could layer something on like that. See why it's so handy to cut these out ahead of time? Because you can play around with them. And then we have this piece here, which you could layer that on top of it. Oh my goodness, so many possibilities. I love this one. I love all the little pokey holes around there. And I love to layer. If you've ever seen any of my cards, look at this one. This is so, so pretty. And these holes are just the right size where I'm thinking you could even thread a needle with embroidery thread and you could do some stitching right around the border if you wanted to. But you can layer these all kinds of ways. And if you've ever seen my cards, I love to layer. I pile it on, but you could do something like that. You can use these frames with designer series paper so that these don't have to be cardstock, they can be patterns. So there's lots and lots of options with these frames. And that is what I look for when I buy dies. I don't just buy them with every single stamp set that has them. They, I look at them and see, can I use them for things 
other than the stamp set they're designed to go with. And this particular set was a definite yes. You could buy these frames just by themselves without the stamp set and get so much use out of them. So these are the Ornate Layers dies. Okay, and then the other die set that is part of this Ornate Garden Suite are the Ornate Borders dies. So if you just remember the word Ornate, you'll have gotten it all because that's pretty much what everything is called. Oh, let me get all the little pieces out. This one has lots of little moving parts. Okay. There we go. This is this one actually, it's exactly what it says. It cuts borders out of cardstock. So we have this die right here that cuts out this gorgeous scallop die, or this gorgeous scalloped cardstock. I love that. Love it. Then we have this one. This one is probably my favorite. It is this one right here. But when you die cut this, it actually die cuts it as a border. So when you cut it by itself, that's that's the piece it is. So you could leave this peeking out of the edge of your card. It's for a pretty uh, so a really pretty edge. But if you want this piece itself, then what you do is you take, you run it through your die cut machine and you've got this. Then you take this piece here and you would line it up at the bottom of that. Just like that, run it through your die cut machine and it would cut it out for you so it becomes this. And this would be a gorgeous one, I think, for maybe a stained glass look. Like you could put, um, you could put pattern paper behind this one too. You could glue this to your white cardstock, and then you can use your Stampin' Blend markers like this to color in between those spaces for um, a stained glass look. Do put this on vellum. Do the same thing. A lot of fun looks with that one. Then the next piece we have is this one right here, which. This is the die that cuts that one out. I like that one. And what I was thinking too is there are these little flower dies right here. There's three of them right there. And I was thinking, so this is one of the flowers. This is the other, the other flower. And here's that one right there. Cutting those out in a contrasting color. And then you could glue them onto there to get a really 3D multi-layered look. I think that would look really pretty too. And you know, just do this in a different color so that they really stand out. So there's that one. And then we have this one right here. So whoops, this one is a little skinny one with a bunch of little holes poked into it and some stitching right there. And then we have this one. This is another border die. And that would be this one right here. So again, you can tuck this behind the edge of your card and you would have, a, I mean, this would be great for wedding invitations. Um, the thank yous that go along with your wedding invitations or your bridal showers, um, a Mother's Day luncheon maybe, or an Easter brunch. This would look really pretty, very spring-like. And here's the other thing. When I use this die, I saw that these little shapes right here got punched out right here and I, I'm gonna save those because I like to tuck and layer pieces on my cards um, and these would be perfect for that so you know look look at your dies in a new way and look at the pieces it cuts out because you can find uses for them I like those now the other thing I do too is I these pieces that I all cut out as my samples, I will keep them in a little envelope and then keep them in the larger envelope with the dies. And that way, when I'm playing around with my cards and with the layout and the design, I have them all handy and nearby for me to use. So we have that and we put those aside. And you get a lot of, a lot of dies in this particular suite. Okay, let me put those away. All right, I saved the best part of the suite for last. The paper is always my favorite. Always, always my favorite. And this is it. Let me pull it out of the packaging. 
new paper has a certain smell to it that I find addicting. <laughs> I am sure I am not the only paper crafter that gets a new thing of paper, package of paper, and smells it. So, oh, it smells so good. So this is the pack of paper, and if you ever get Stampin' Up! paper, you will see on the label, they tell you the coordinating colors that are in this paper. So, we have Early Espresso, which is a deep dark chocolate, Mint Macaron, which is a very light green, Old Olive, which is this right here, and Terracotta Tile, which is one of our in colors, and Whisper White, and there's a new one. Stampin' Up! comes up with five new colors every year in June and they gave us a little hint of it this time and it's called Bumblebee. That is not one of our current colors so I know that that is going to be one of the new ones coming out. And it sounds like it's going to be a yellow. So you get 12 sheets in a pack of 12 by 12 designer series paper. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. And you get two sheets of each pattern. There's a front and back to each one. So do you think this might be the bumblebee one? I don't know. I think that might be that darker yellow. I think that's the bumblebee one. This is terracotta tile. This is like a lighter version of terracotta tile. There's mint macaron. There's old olive. Don't you love the names for these colors? It's not just green. It's not just yellow. It's bumblebee. Bumblebee. Bumblebee tuna. Did you guys ever see Duck Dynasty where the guy went under? I forget. There was their son. He went under in the dentist's office for some kind of root canal or something. And then in the car ride, <laughs> he kept saying, Bumblebee Tuna, Bumblebee Tuna. It was so funny. Did you ever watch Duck Dynasty? So there's that one. And I'm getting off topic here. Then there's this one. This is Terracotta Tile. And oh my gosh, look at this. This is so pretty, and you know what? Let me pull back that stamp set. There's the flowers. There you go. <gasps> wait, wait, there's the gems, and let's pull out the ribbon. Oh yeah, see how it all works together? This is why I like Stampin' Up! This is why I like Stampin' Up! Because even if you don't feel good at color coordination, or patterns, or putting things together, they do it for you so that you can do it. You totally can do this. This is why I love Stampin' Up. So there's that pattern. And let's see. Oh, look at this one. It's got gold foil on it. Oh, yeah. That is so elegant. So elegant. Hi, Mike. Did you sell all your Girl Scout cookies? Look at that one. So cute. So cute. That's the same one. This one, I have, I'm going to say, I am not wowed about this pattern. This just, this is not me. But I like to distress things and, you know, take sponges and put brown ink all over it. So I will find a way to distress this to my liking. But you know what? Everybody has a different stamping style. And so that's why there's all kinds of different things out there. So <laughs> this, oh, this is beautiful. Look at that. You, you could color that with your blends too. Or you could take a sponge dauber and, you know, like an ink pad like that and just tap the color all over it. I'm going to actually do that in my Facebook Live tomorrow. I'm going to show you how to color designer series paper. So I'm thinking I might go live every day this week just, just for the fun of it. Oh, I like this one too. This is more gold foil and mint macaron. That's a really striking combination. You did sell them and more. Good. I bet that made Jocelyn very happy. Like a little Girl Scout. Oh, this one. I like this one. What do you guys think of that one? That's pretty. That's really pretty. And there's some more gold foil to color. Oh, I think this might be my favorite. I think this is my favorite one. Oh, yeah. I like that. Really, really pretty stuff. Okay, so that's the whole suite. I will show you now what I have been making with it. I was in a creativity... I had a major burst of creativity last week, and I happen to have a lot of time to stamp, too. So I love when it all aligns like that. So I was a crazy stampin' woman. I wasn't just the joyful stamper. I was the crazy stamper. And you know what? Emma's friends, I found out, they called me the paranoid stamper because I'm making everybody stay home 
during this time. Although I have to admit, Emma went out tonight. I relented. I felt kind of bad. She's 19 and I was like, oh. I know I still have authority, but I don't know. I relented. I'm telling you what, with each kid, you get a little bit more per permissive and a little bit lax. So I am so worn down at this point. I say yes to everything. Can't help it. Okay, so I made this card. And this uses that rose die I was showing you where you can make it as a border or you can use that little skinny metal piece and cut it out. So I did this in Rococo Rose and Pool Party and glued it to my card. And this background is that 3D, um, ornate 3D floral embossing folder. And I embossed, what is this, gray granite, I think? Yeah, so glued that to a Rococo Rose card front. This flower here is actually Flowering Foils Designer Series Paper. And this is a free pack of paper during celebration. So it's through March 31st or while supplies last. But... I used sponge daubers and a Rococo Rose ink pad and a pool party ink pad to apply color to it. I'm going to show it on my Facebook Live tomorrow at 2 o'clock. It is super easy, foolproof, can't mess it up, and you get three 12 by 12 sheets of this particular pattern, so you've got lots of flowers to try this on. And then this thanks right here is from a set called Seriously the Best. I love that big chunky font. So, but the things from the Ornate Garden Suite are this embossing folder and these dies right here. So, so pretty. Love this color combination together. And then, let me see what else I've got. Oh, I've got these cards right here, which I actually showed these on my blog today with a video on how to make these. And what I used on this was the sentiments from the set here. Ornate Thanks. I decided to go ahead and make a whole set of thank you cards. I made four of them. So I took strips of the So Very Vellum Designer Series paper, and this also is a free celebration offering through March 31st or while supplies last, and it has dry embossing on it. And it's in Purple Posy and Pool Party and Soft Sea Foam, and I went nuts with it. I just cut different strips of different sizes. I took some shimmer detailed laser cut paper and snipped some pieces out and glued them on. And then I took all those different sayings from On Right Things and I made thank you cards. So it says, you're amazing. I'm so grateful. And that little I'm is part of the stamp set too. And then this one, you made my day. I'm so grateful. And what's really great about these cards is they use minimal supplies and they use the same supplies on all four cards. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And that's Highland Heather ink. I thought it looked so pretty with the soft sea foam. Just wanted to say thank you. So there's a set of thank you cards you can make with that ornate thanks set. And then the last card I have is this one. This is my over the top card. This is the style that I really like to stamp in. You're seriously the best. This stamp set is called seriously the best. But what is from the ornate garden suite is this frame right here. I was making the card and I thought it needed something up in the corner and my eye fell on my new die set. So I cut one out in Pretty Peacock. This is Ornate Frames dies and I just tucked it right there behind this terracotta tile scalloped linen ribbon. And the background is from a set called Seriously the Best and I just stamped Hello Friend without re-inking in terracotta tile ink just around my background there. And these flowers were colored the same way as that first card. Flowering foils, designer series paper, free celebration item, sponge daubers, and a pretty peacock and terracotta towel ink pad. You just put the sponge dauber in your finger and just color it. And then the ribbon there and I added some pearls. This distressing, I used a bone folder right here. And you just beat up your cardstock. So if you ever had a bad day, and you need to take your aggression out on something, just distress your paper. And then you can make a really nice card with it. And I don't have anything on the inside. So, but I just, I love making over the top cards like this. I might start getting back to that actually. Cause I've been making pretty simple cards for a while. So that is the Ornate Garden Suite. It's gonna be available April 1st. However, 
if you want to get it now, you can sign up as a demonstrator on my team of Joyful Stampers. $99, this is it, $99, you get free shipping, you get to pick out $125 a product, which can be this ornate garden product suite, the paper, stamp sets, dies, whatever, the ribbon, the gems, um, you can pick that out. You can you get business supplies, but you don't have to make it a business. You get a free paper cutter. You get 48 sheets of designer series paper. And I feel like you're oh, and you get a free stamp set of your choice. You can pick the most expensive one out in the catalog. So you get roughly, was it $208 a product? for $99 plus sales tax and you don't pay any shipping on it. You don't have to sell, you don't have to buy. If you want to order anything, you get a 20% discount going forward. It just it's it's a no lose. If you want to try out stamping, if you want to try out being on my team, take stamping up for a test run, this is the time to do it because this deal's only good until March 31st. So, $99. I mean, that's a really awesome deal. So check out my site, thejoyfulstamper.com. You can get more details on that. I would love to have you be part of my team. If you want to order any supplies, um, shopwithnicole.stampinup.com. Um, stampinup.net, sorry. And use this reward code. I have a tutorial bundle that I uh, will email you. So thank you so much for joining me tonight or for watching this replay. Um, and I will be live tomorrow again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon where I will actually make two cards. I will do product live product demonstrations. So I hope you will join me. I hope you're surviving this quarantine and making the best of it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.